M.A. is a 40-year-old woman who was admitted to the hospital after experiencing a severe headache. The headache started two days ago and she initially thought that it would go away, but instead the agonizing pain did not stop and it even got worse. M.A. started vomiting, felt weakness in her arms and legs and had difficulty in speech. There was no history of trauma to the head and she had no observable wound, so what happens? To answer that question, M.A. had to undergo several rounds of testing during which she experienced fever. And then finally a CT scan of her head showed swellings in her brain. Now it became clear M.A. had a blood clot in her brain. For the doctors this means that they have to hurry and start treatments otherwise the patient could die. The condition M.A. had is relatively rare, but in the past week several instances have been reported. The notable thing about these cases is that primarily women have been infected who have been vaccinated with AstraZeneca. My name is Ken Steinig and today we'll discuss how blood clots form and how they might be associated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. We have already covered blood clots two years ago in my <laughs> actually first video. But now that people discuss a possible link between the AstraZeneca vaccine and getting blood clots in the brain, I wanted to cover the topic once more. And as a short disclaimer, I don't really care about politics, that's not my field, I just want to discuss the science of blood clots. I guess there is a lot of room for political discussions on some news channels or Facebook groups, but here we just talk about science. We'll focus on the biology of blood clots, how they might form and discuss some risk factors and a possible link to the AstraZeneca vaccine. And with that, let's start. A blood clot or thrombus is a gelatinous mass that forms in a vessel. Blood clots can form in different parts of the body and they can vanish like due to prank channels or they can remain like Fortnite dances. And that joke just took me 5 minutes to write. Some blood clots can cause pain or swellings while others do not cause any symptoms, meaning that we do not know that we have them. But how exactly are they made? Our story today starts in our vessels. Blood vessels allow our blood to circulate. Of course blood contains many crucial components such as red blood cells which provide cells with oxygen but also immune cells which fight off pathogens, nutrients, hormones or water. Some components of our bodies however which are normally very important can cause blood clots if things go wrong. And this works differently depending on whether our blood clot arises in arteries or veins. If we are in an artery then it often starts with a blood component called LDL. LDL or low density lipoprotein is a complex which transports fat to our cells. And there is nothing wrong with that, LDL is very important for many different mechanisms. But unfortunately humans have too much LDL and that depends on our genetics and our diets. As a consequence LDL can start to move into the walls of our arteries. Here the complexes are slightly modified which is recognized by immune cells which starts to eat them and cause inflammation. This now attracts more and more cells and the structure begins to grow and can potentially rupture. And if that happens then a blood clot can form. In veins things are a bit different. Due to several factors we first have an inflammation which changes the property of the vein. For these changes in the vein, immune cells and platelets start to attach. The immune cells again think that something goes wrong and they cause inflammation which attract other parts of the blood. And this includes so called coagulation factors which become activated. Coagulation factors are proteins which control bleeding and they start now to trigger blood clotting. The blood clot might not do too much harm meaning that we do not even realize that we have it but sometimes it might start to obstruct blood flow and this can become dangerous. And then finally the blood clot can also enter the bloodstream and start to completely block a vessel somewhere else in the body. And in both cases the affected parts of the body get less oxygen and nutrients and this means that cells die. Depending on where the blood clot occurs different diseases can manifest themselves. This can include strokes, pulmonary embolism or heart attacks. The woman we have discussed in the beginning of this video suffered from cerebral venous sinus thrombosis or CVST. 
In CVST, a blood gut occurs in vessels called the dural venous synesis, which are important for the blood flow of the brain. Note that the blood clot occurs in veins in this case. As you might have already guessed, CVST is a highly complicated disease where a lot of factors might play a role. What is quite interesting about CVST is that women are three times more affected than men. There are two reasons why this is the case and both of them are based on hormonal changes. Both pregnancy and the oral contraceptive pill can temporarily change the hormone levels of women which then on the other hand can trigger CVST. It has actually taken quite a while until scientists figure out why hormones can play a role in CVST. You see hormones can impact the levels of coagulation factors which again are the proteins that trigger bleeding. Some examples are fibrinogen, prothrombin or the coagulation factors 7, 8 and 10. The abnormal levels of these proteins which are now caused by taking for example the contraceptive pill can now increase the risk of CVST by 5 to 22 fold. Besides hormones there are also other factors which can cause blood clotting in veins. It has also been found that obesity, surgery and smoking can all increase the risk of blood clot formation. And then finally there is genetics. Many genes have a small impact on CVST or blood clot formation in general. To be more precise, if we have certain variations of certain genes then we might have a higher or lower risk in developing CVST. The majority of these genes are involved in blood clotting or in immune responses, which of course makes sense. One gene variation might lead to lower levels of antithrombin which would normally prevent blood clotting. And then another gene variation might increase the levels of prothrombin which causes blood clotting. And as a very famous example I have the F5 gene for you. It has been found that a version of the F5 gene can increase the risk of abnormal blood clotting. This gene version is called Factor V Leiden and we can either have 0, 1 or 2 copies. If we have this gene version 0 times, meaning that we do not have it at all, then we have a risk of 1 to 1000 to develop abnormal blood clotting. If we have one copy of Factor V Leiden, then the risk increases to 3 to 8 in 1000. And if we have this copy 2 times, then the risk is 80 in 1000. That's right, if we have this gene version two times, then the risk is 80 times higher to develop abnormal blood clotting. So what about the AstraZeneca vaccine? To answer the question, we need to keep these other risk factors in mind. What we can say without hesitation is that the AstraZeneca vaccine does not play a major role in provoking abnormal blood clots. Consider this, blood clots occur in blood vessels in 1 out of 20 patients who are admitted with COVID-19 to the hospital. It has even been observed that the AstraZeneca vaccine slightly decreases the risk of getting blood clots in vessels. The reason why the AstraZeneca vaccine has been so controversial in the past weeks is that 18 cases of CVST shortly after vaccination have been reported. There have also been past cases where otherwise young and healthy people developed CVST shortly after being infected with COVID-19. And again the very notable thing is that CVST is normally very rare. So we would expect less than 18 CVST cases in the 20 million people in Europe who have been vaccinated with AstraZeneca so far. It is very important to figure out what happened in these 18 cases and it's a good thing that the governments were so careful here. What might have happened is that very rare genetic versions together with an overreactive immune system might have triggered CVST after vaccination. And this would mean that in very rare instances your body interacts with the AstraZeneca vaccine abnormally but we need to conduct further studies in order to say if that's correct. So as a last point, once CVST has occurred, what can we do? Unfortunately, CVST is a detrimental disease and is often fatal. It's specifically nasty as it deprives different regions of the brain of oxygen which means that we need to be very quick. So the first measure is often to oxygenate the patient properly. In this manner we can try to provide the affected brain regions with more oxygen leading to less cell death. Then drugs such as heparin can also be administered which reverse blood clotting. 
And the good thing about these drugs is that they also decrease the risk that further blood clotting occurs. And then we also can administer thrombolytic agents. Thrombolytic agents are substances which completely resolve the blood clots. This could completely restore the blood flow. What I want to point out is that these drugs often have severe side effects, which makes things more difficult. One major side effect being that blood can leak from vessels. We can also try to do surgeries to remove the blood clot, but this can also be very dangerous as the affected veins are in close proximity to the brain. So there are some possible treatments, but CVST is a very dangerous and potentially fatal disease. So now the question to you, my science squad, what do you think? You, the most sophisticated scholars on earth, would you personally feel safe if you took the AstraZeneca vaccine? And oh boy, please stay civil in the comment section. This can be terrible. And now let's try it very quick. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like. If you're new here and you like fancy science, then you can subscribe and hit the bell button. And otherwise, I see ya. If you want to know how gamers are developing treatments against COVID-19, click on this video here. We do not only need to eat healthy to avoid blood clots in our vessels, but we also need to sleep well to fight off other diseases. Click on this video here if you want to know more.